Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Fifty years ago, the moon became a symbol of human progress. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. That image of the footprint on the moon, what an image. It's almost as important as, of course, the first picture of Earth rising seen from the moon. But long before we could reach its surface, the moon held special meaning for humanity. It is one of our primal instincts to connect with the moon, to just look at it and observe it. The moon is responsible for the tides, it influences the waters on this planet, and thus it has influenced our culture and how we live. The moon is quite often a symbol of life and the cycle of life. But on the other hand, we also see the moon as a symbol of death and fear and danger because you know, the moon is associated with night. But the moon is more than just a symbol. It is an anchor to our life and it brings us together, everybody and the whole world can see the moon. Is that pretty awesome? People aren't usually expecting to see something as beautiful as the moon, especially when they see it almost every day. Wow. But once you start teaching them about craters, and you start teaching them about mountains, and how the moon has a relationship to the Earth, then they're, they're more you know, intrigued. Today, telescopes show us the moon in astonishing detail. But that wasn't always the case. For many, many years, centuries, millennia, we could see the moon, and we could just about with the naked eye see that it has some sort of surface structure, but that was it. And things changed greatly in the early 17th century when a Dutch optician invented a very, very basic telescope. We pulled the moon towards us with this very, very, very simple tool. We could see the surface of the moon in greater detail. As the moon came into focus, we began to imagine traveling there. In the later um, 19th century, Jules Verne publishes books about imagined journeys to the moon. And what he does is he makes space travel believable. And then as we enter into the, the 20th century, we see an early film and people are beginning to imagine the moon's surface. 2,000 feet, end of the act, 47 degrees. From the 1950s onwards, and of course culminating in 1969 with Apollo 11 actually landing on the moon and humans setting foot on it, we saw what it really looked like. So we had photography, we had close-up photography, and then we had human accounts of what it was like to be on the moon. All right, that looks beautiful from here, Neil. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like much of the high desert of uh, the United States. Today, the moon continues to inspire. In the night sky and in contemporary works of art, like Museum of the Moon by Luke Jerram. He created a model of the moon, which is about seven meters in diameter, and it's sort of illuminated from the inside. He uses NASA images uh, to create his moon models. And he hangs them in public spaces. So they can be indoors or outdoors, in swimming pools, in parks, in museums. People gather around it, under it, they look at it, and it becomes an event. And I find that really moving because that is exactly what humans have been doing since time began. We've looked at the moon, and we've been mesmerized by it.